If you're an academic or you spend any amount of time in academic Twitter, you'd have heard about how controversial AI academic apps are at the moment. And there are so many different websites and platforms that use AI technology, some with ChatGPT, some independent, that allow you to do a number of different things from proofreading, editing, finding research papers, writing outlines, like so many different aspects of the research process can be done by AI platforms right now. So I thought if you're someone who's starting your PhD or starting some research um, or just university this month in September, you might find it useful to know about a few AI apps slash websites. And these are five platforms that I'm absolutely loving right now for a number of different reasons. And I want to give you a quick tutorial through all of them. So let's go. Okay, so the first one is called Unriddle and I found it only a few weeks ago and I really like it because it allows you to upload a research paper. So for example here, I've uploaded this one already so you can see what this looks like and it allows you to take a look at um, the paper and ask actual questions. So initially, as I uploaded this paper, the first thing that it asked me was, would you like to ask the document these questions? And having a look at those questions, they are tailored to this particular research paper. So the first one says, explain this to me like I'm five. So it's obviously saying, explain this to me in the most basic way, which you know what, as researchers, sometimes you just need someone to explain it to you like you're five. Um, and then it, the, the other questions are specific. And let's say you hadn't read this yet or you didn't know kind of what you should know. These are actually good starting points. So it says, what is a membrane and how do they, and why do they wash it? What does it mean when they say this? What are TKIs and why are they important in this experiment? And what is this thresh threshold concentration and why is it important? So it not only asks the question, but it also relates it to why it's important and like the impact of it, which as a new academic, as someone that's reading this paper for the first time, it's really important for me to know that. So let's take a look. So um, what are TKIs and why are they important in this experiment? So it first goes on to explain what TKIs are, which gives you that background, like general knowledge, which you should obviously know. And then it says in this experiment, they are important because the researchers are studying their cardiotoxicity. By the way, this is my research from my masters. Um, and it says they also examine this. This is, in, uh, this is crucial to understand, etc. So like, this is really important and I really like how much detail it goes into. So it's not just giving you background, but it's also relating it to a more independent thought where it's like giving um, supporting information. So I really like this. You're also able to write notes at the same time. So I can go here and I can say, I'm going to write um, a lit review for this and or I can just like write my own stuff if I want to and then I can also ask AI some questions so I can say um, summarize this or improve the writing make it sound better and then it'll improve it for you down there um, and of course with AI one thing to remember with AI and academia you're not copying and pasting you're not saying okay let me take this copy and paste it and put it into my lit review that's not the ethical way of using AI what you are meant to do is you meant to see this and say okay I understand what it means now I understand like the topic better, I can now write it in my own words and reference. So it's never copying and pasting, that's not what you're meant to do. The second platform that I really enjoy is PaperPal and I've spoken about it on this platform before so many times. I really like it as a platform that allows you to um, improve your writing through not only the, the website, so this is actually on the web app, but you can also install the word add-in as well. So if you're writing on Word, you can install the word add-in and get the same features there. So I've got this bit of writing that I've done. Um, I can then select language, which will give me all the language issues. So um, redundancy, there's words that, there's a word here that doesn't need to be there. Um, rephrasing, uh, capitalization, which is, yeah, that's true actually verb form, punctuation, things like that. So that's really important. So you can accept all of those. The second thing is it can give you synonyms. So let's say I don't like implicated. I can select implicated like that. And then it will say has been involved in, has been indicated in. And the nice thing about this, actually, I, I realized this not too long ago, is when you when you do this, that the percentage that it gives you on the side here is relating to how often that word is used in research in other published literature. So you could say implicated is the best word to use here because it's most widely used, but the next one could be involved. 
and that would also be fine. Um, okay, the next one is rewrite. So let's say I want to write this bit again. You have to select at least 10 words and then it allows you to, well, it will rewrite it for you in another way, um, which is really nice because it just gives you like another option for how to write it down there. So you can copy and paste that. The next one is trimming. So I can say it's 77 words, write it to me in 50 words and you can say trim text and it will give you a trimmed version of this part, which again, has more reduction than allowed. Okay, let's see, let's say 60, let's say 65. Okay, so here, so it's cut it down to 58 words from 77. So one thing I like about this is that, let's say you have too much text and you're just not sure how to reduce it, this can really help, but it's not a matter of like, highlighting everything and saying reduce it, but sections that you might want to reduce. And then of course, you then need to read this and make sure it still makes sense and make sure it still says what you wanted to say, of course. The next one is ChatGPT. And whilst I remember my last video, I was talking about ChatGPT and I was saying, don't use ChatGPT and everyone went crazy about it. You can use it, but there are certain things that you can use it for. So um, one thing that I would like to use it for is to improve titles. So I've said improve this title and I've given a title and I said, can you improve it? And it has given me like a slight improvement. And then I can say, can you suggest five more titles? Oops. And then it can give me five other options. And what I like to do, I actually don't like to copy one of the titles. I like to mix and match. So what you'll find is that it uses slightly different words in each of the options. And I might like one word in one option, but not the other option of the whole sentence. So I'll take one word out and mix and match. And it's just one of those things that like, you know, you're stuck, you know this title that you've got, it doesn't sound great. And this way you're able to kind of brainstorm without having to think too much. Um, the next one is Elicit. And Elicit is another platform where you can upload your research paper that you're interested in understanding. And actually with this one, you can upload more than one paper so you can get a comparison. And then let's say we can, tick all of these. So it allows you to see the abstract summary and then you can see how many participants, this would be good if you're doing like a systematic review on some sort of um, research where you're using participants. Um, intervention, outcomes measured. And anyway, let's go into it. So when you go into it, what it does is you can see that you've got the abstract there, of course, and that's, and then the rest of the paper is all there. But on the side here, you have these nice summaries that I think is really useful. Um, as someone who's beginning to read research or just wants a quick like skim through. So there's an abstract summary. Then it says, what did they test? And it gives you what they tested. So they, inter they did an intervention with TKIs and it includes these particular drugs, which is true. Um, what outcomes did they measure? Again, you can see what outcomes were measured. If I go view source, what does it do? Okay, so it highlights the parts where that's mentioned, which again is really important. So you can see sort of like, you know, you're learning, at the end of the day, you're, you're learning. So it's nice for you to compare the two. Um, who were the participants? <laughs> this is funny. Neonatal rats, heart cells were the participants. Essentially, those were what, what were being tested on. Um, then, can I trust this paper? So yeah, so what it says is, it gives you like different categories for whether this paper can be trusted. And again, it just helps you with being analytical and critical towards what you're reading. So it's experimental, okay? There's nothing mentioned about funding, nothing mentioned about participant counts. There's, uh, they've adjusted for different comparisons, which were given here, okay? Um, no mention for red, treat, whatever. So these are things that you might want to look at when thinking, is this, can I trust a paper that's about a topic, but it's been funded by a party that has interest in this topic maybe you can't trust it so that's why these are things that you need to think about um, critiques other citations that were given and um, you can then ask some questions about this paper I don't find that this is really that helpful this part here so let's say for example I was to say um, what are the main results of this paper um, Oddly, it says no mention found for all the questions I ask. So I don't think this is that helpful when it comes to asking questions, but I think giving a quick abstract and understanding sort of what are the comparative nature, like the comparative things that you want to look at between papers, I think is quite helpful. 
And then last but not least is Connected Papers, which is a website that allows you to kind of generate a like research paper map, which I think is helpful for not only understanding how papers connect and like finding related papers, but you can also take this and take a picture of like these graphs that you can see and include it in your actual literature review if you think it'll be helpful. So you can select a paper, that's your origin paper, and then you can take a look at the lines and the connections to other papers. And just to quickly like describe how you use it, each node is an academic paper that's related to the origin paper, so all of these other ones are related to it. They're arranged according to their similarity, um, the size of the node is the number of citations, the node colour is the publishing year, so the darker it is, the more recent it is. Um, and then similar papers have strong connections and uh, connecting lines and cluster together. So this is a nice map that allows you to pick out other papers and other research that you may have missed and that may be important for you to understand. I hope that gave you a quick overview of five of the academic AI uh, platforms that I'm actually really enjoying right now. There are so many more that I also enjoy for a number of different reasons, but these are five that I think can give you a quick um, understanding of some research papers and also help you improve your writing too. If there are others that you I have forgotten about or that I haven't mentioned in this video, do let me know down below. And if you want a part two, I can do that as well. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.